information on our bank balance. We have uh, balance in the bank is 38, 28, and 84 cents. And he just has a few more little field day things to pay off. And um, we'll talk about field day shortly, but uh, I don't know what I hope all of you had the chance to read the newsletter that went out in the email. Don, wow, pretty good. Back in there. Those of you who've read the newsletter, thank you, Don. Beautiful coverage here of Field Day. We had uh, local officials. We had uh, K uh, what, the N2ZZ yes. from the uh, Norfolk office and another fellow that was with him I wasn't familiar with. But you know we were in the paper, front page, above the fold, as you say, Harold. So really <laughs> great coverage. Great Field Day event. Um, we know it was hot as blue blazes on Saturday and Friday. but. Um, and it was a little hair pulling on Saturday morning, like there always is, but things came together very well. We got on the air just in time for the thunderstorm. But <laughs> you know, these things happen at this time of year for us. So Daryl has a few things he wanted to say about Field Day and our numbers. And Daryl, the pretend lines are here. <laughs> well, I hope everybody that came out to Field Day enjoyed themselves. Uh, if you didn't come out, uh, Hope to be there next year, and I hope everybody that wanted to operate did. Uh, if anybody didn't get a chance to operate that wanted to, uh, next year, uh, if that happens, uh, you track me down and let me know. We'll make sure you get on the radio. Uh, as far as our scores, uh, for reference, uh, in 2016, we made 3,039 QSOs. Uh, this year, we made 3,500 and 56 QSOs. Now, uh, that, you know, translating that into points, uh, 2016 was 11,908 points, and this year uh, the point total will be 13,494 points. That was a significant increase. Uh, that, was, that was a heck of a job by a lot of people. Really appreciate it. Where was, where was our standing last year with those numbers and what was the winning numbers last year? Uh, the winning numbers last year in the nine alpha were um, 12,000, let's see what was it, it was 12,700 and change. So we're basically uh, 700 and about 775 points above the winning score of last year. So. Somebody, did I see another hand go up? So hopefully we'll cross our fingers and see what happens. But, uh, definitely a significant uh, increase over 2016. A lot of hard work by a lot of people. Appreciate it. And that's all I have. Thank you, Dale. Okay. <laughs> Anyone has. Uh... Yeah, we get in line here. Anyone who's. Uh... I work with Field Day Group knows that it's, it's a good working group. We learn something every year. And one thing I brought up to Daryl that we just never had quite figured out, but I thought about it after Field Day, and that is next year we're going to dump the coaxes on the top of the hill and roll them down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an improvement. And Gravity works wonders, doesn't it? Gravity works great. And by the way, it works both ways. When we're finished, We'll start at the top of the hill and roll them down. So uh, that all worked out really good. Yeah, that hard line. Yeah, that hard line had to be, yeah. Yeah, that's a, and that, that was for the go instructions. So that's important. A lot of great people. Good food for Steve. Yeah, Steve, there you are. Steve had a great menu for us. We had plenty left over. And I think we just didn't have as many people turn out because of that, that rain really one of the Henry, played a, Henry played a big part of that uh, coordination. Uh, yeah, yeah. Henry, Henry's hiding back in the room there making sure I stay between the supposed blue lines. But uh, Henry, did you want to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> he said, it might be the first time today. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um, well, next on the agenda, I think we're going to turn it over to 
Mr. Colbert here who's going to talk to us about uh, a couple of different things. There he is and EC. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me get to you. Wait, before Carla starts, the pictures, uh, I have them in a Dropbox file. If anybody wants the pictures, send me an email to that address with the subject of picture link, and I'll send you the link so you can get to them. There you go. Thank you, Harold. Yeah. All right. You go. I'm going to get 20 imaginary lines. Okay. <laughs> Aries is doing well. We, uh, we're getting 20 to 22 check-ins every Thursday evening, which is great. Uh, we'd like to see more. We'll continue to do operations there. One of the operations we're getting ready to have in anticipation of the Tour de Tanglewood is the end of the month we're going to run a scenario on the air. Uh, we have select stations that are going to act as tactical call sign stations. So that everybody gets an opportunity to hear what that sounds like. And then later on in August, we'll do it again. And anybody else that would like to do that gets the opportunity to practice. And the idea is to make sure you know how to use tactical call signs properly before we get into the tour of Tanglewood operation, which is the 16th and 17th of September. Right now, we're looking at 22 to 26 operators needed. So we need to really make sure we start getting the sign-ups. I've got a sign-in sheet I'm going to pass around. Again, they are asking if you have a radio-equipped vehicle that you would like to use and be a SAG, they will provide the bike rack. They do have strap-ons, however, they are talking to multiple bike shops and they do anticipate having the receiver trailer hitch style bike racks that you can put in the back for vehicles that have that but have a spoiler and they can't put the strap on the back deck. Why do we want to go with a radio equipped mobile as opposed to a handheld? Again, and most people that have done it know, when you get towards the fringe edges of Davie County, especially on Sunday, we lose that communications capability because a handheld just won't make it to the repeater. So we need to hire power mobiles to ensure that communications. They're doing this actually at most every other bike MS rally that they do throughout the Southeast. They're getting the hands to provide their vehicles and then they're getting secondary people to sit with you and act as your navigator. That way you've got your mobile. I will be going to New Bern for the bike MS route ride the Saturday and Sunday prior. So I'll be on the other end of the state the weekend prior. And that's to evaluate and observe how they do it there. And then the uh, plan is to combine the two, come up with one standard for them, which is what bike MS wants. And they actually have asked me to go take a look at some other rides with them as well, which I will do throughout the remainder of the year. And we're going to come up with a standard that they want to use, at least in the southeast area. So we're kind of leading the pack. So I'd like to put on a good show for that. If you want to drive your vehicle, please just let me know. I've got the sign-in sheet. We need about 10 SAGs. That's a support vehicle. We're going to have eight rest stops right now is the plan. It may go up or down, but they don't anticipate it really decreasing. We're going to need probably four shadows. They are going to have at least two of their people that normally we would shadow with an operator, they will be amateur radio operators by Fort Tangle. They're actually taking their test, I think it's this month, uh, to get their license. So we wish them well. They will not have to have a shadow because they'll already be operators. So we're encouraging them to do that, so that's helping reduce what we need. Any questions? Please put the 1617 down. We'll pass around the sign-in sheet. Let me know soonest. That's it. Okay, where's the sign-in sheet? There it is. Start it away. Now that Dale has gotten seated, Dale, could you give us the uh, testing report and repeater report, please, sir? Oh, good to sit down. Thanks, sir. Well, again, uh, we, we had a lot more bees this time than uh, we had. Those for the camera. 
We're at the line now, here, right? That's where you're supposed no, to go. Right another another here, step over. Right, right there. Right there. Right there. You, you, right there. Right you there. Right 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 we had a lot more VEs here this time than the examinees. We uh, were pleasantly surprised. Pedro, was Pedro here? Is he still over here? Yeah, Pedro took his test. He's a friend of uh, Don, so he has a real good idea how the tech exam looks next time. So he's glad to be here. We had uh, VEs stand up, if you would, please. And we're here tonight. We had Bob will embarrass you, and there were a few others. Henry. <laughs> Seven of them. Again, these folks are the folks that are bringing new people into ham radio, so we appreciate it. As far as the repeaters, they're all up and running. Um, the uh, well, except the Echolink node went down on uh, in the back room. Now I have to look at that afterwards. There was uh, apparently a, either a Microsoft update that came in, or the Red Cross um, internet went down. So I have to see which that is. I can't get into it remotely if it's down like that. Uh, four seven uh, echo links up. So is the four seven repeater, the six four repeater, and four forty. We still have the pager interference on six four, so that's still going to be a to do. Other than that, uh, future plans for the repeaters when we get up to them. Any questions at this point? Okay, thank you. Uh, Dale, yeah. we'll see when we tried to sign it on with the computer back here, the mm -hmm. monitor that there was no internet access and the Harold. Well, that one was turned off, though, wasn't it? Was it? That PC? Yeah, it was turned yeah, off. Yeah, we just reset good. the adapter. Yeah. And so then came, came back up? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll double check it. There's uh, the Red, Red Cross has been kind enough to be our host on the Internet, but we've had some challenges uh, over the past few years, so we'll see what it is this time and try to take care of it, and uh, hopefully it won't be as long as uh, we had before. So we'll look for some alternatives. But it looks like we have Internet now. It's just a matter of making sure that Service working properly. Okay. Thanks for Thank that. Thank you very much. All right. Without further ado, Jeff is going to talk to us tonight about Amazing Sky. All right. Good deal. I'm Jeff Rudy. For any of you that don't know me, um, I've worked a uh, little bit with Scouts. A lot of you think I might be a Scout Master or something. I'm not, actually. I could probably need to move into the camera. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I'm not a scout master, but I just had a couple of boys that went through scouting. Um, my wife kind of gets the credit. I'm married into scouting with her. She's uh, her whole family is uh, full of Eagle Scouts, all her dad and brothers, and all her nephews and everything else. So um, I've been been around it uh, quite a bit. Um, but anyway, this topic of radio scouting it sounds like kind of a weird weird term, but it really comes from kind of an official poster from this radio scouting group and I think this is really more of an international uh, effort and the, the Boy Scouts of America are all playing a part of this as well but you see uh, several things in here they're basically going to just talk through a lot of the content that's on here but in some more detail So I guess first question is how many of you guys were Boy Scouts? Yeah, quite a few, quite a few, good deal. Cub Scouts count. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so how and how many of you been involved with scouting at all as an adult? You had a kid in it or uh, volunteering and doing things good. Awesome. And uh, if any, is anybody familiar with that term radio scouting? Has anybody heard that before? Yeah, there's one back there, I know him. <laughs> all right, yeah, you, you too. Yeah, good deal. Well, I was a scout for a very short period of time and had a change in scout masters and a, you know, a loss of interest and, and all that stuff. Uh, it you know, takes kind of a parent behind you to help you get through all of those things to make it to the end of scouting, I believe. Um, again, again, I've been working just as, as an adult. I'm not a scout master, but uh, I'm just a member of the, the committee of uh, Troop 719 in Louisville. So does anybody know first year of the, of the first transatlantic radio transmission? Anybody got a good stab at that? When, when did this all start? Any guesses? It was prior to 1912, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. It's about 19, 1901, I think, is the date that's credited with that. And how about the founding of Boy Scouts? Any, any guesses about that? Yeah, 1910, that's right. So 
And then when was the radio mega badge created? Yeah, it's in 19, it was in 1918. Mm -hmm. But it's a trick question because it wasn't really the radio merit badge back yeah, then. It was the wireless. <laughs> it was called the wireless merit badge, but they were smart and changed it in 1923 or something to be radio just to keep it keep it from being confused with the Verizon merit badge. <laughs> <laughs> so, so a lot of things on that poster. Just looking at. So when you look at radio scouting, it kind of involves these things: radio merit badge. Uh, a radio operator insignia that goes on a uniform, a Morse code interpreter strip, which is another thing that goes on the uniform. Uh, this thing is called Jamboree on the air that uh, I've done and Jonathan's helped with the last uh, couple of years out in Louisville. Um, just trying to get things up and running in Forsyth County a little bit here. ARL supports this uh, activity and you'll notice that uh, you'll get emails and things like that, Carl Bowman, some of those things in the newsletter talks about this is coming up and it's always the third weekend in October. This is actually the 60th year that that's been going on that's going to be this uh, weekend, October 20th to the 22nd. Um, one of the other things that's on this poster that a lot of people don't really catch right off the bat, it, it field day qualifies as an emergency practice drill for the emergency preparedness merit badge, which is, there's, there's two merit badges that are alternates for being an Eagle Scout, and this is one of them. You can do this, or I think life saving is the other one. You got to do one of the two. So a lot of people need emergency uh, preparedness merit badge, and they're always looking for an event, usually some kind of a you know simulation or something put on by the emergency folks in the county or whatever. Sometimes it's a little hard to find an event, but there's one that happens every year. You know, happens every year, and trying to get the scouts aware of that. Uh, been a little, been a little tough. I try to send out emails and do that. I did it again this year. We didn't have any scouts to bite on that particular uh, bait this year, but uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a, you know, a great way to, you can, you know, something you can count on, something that the scouts can do uh, each year. So as far as the merit badge is concerned, and you know, scouts, you achieve different ranks in scouting based on, you know, your, your age, how long you've been in, how. how accomplishments of things you do, there's all list of things you do, how many merit badges you earn, uh, how you know how many nights of camping you've done, various things like that. And so a merit badge is that's actually what the radio merit badge looks like and you can't see it too well maybe, but it's got a little BSA and code around the around the top of it. Um, but it's just basic radio information. So it's frequencies and the bands, uh, usage of call signs, uh, propagation you talk about phonetics and the FCC and the International Telecommunications Union, uh, difference between block diagrams and schematic diagrams. Um, so new things that are in the merit badge now are talking about the NOAA weather radios, which are actually kind of a cool thing to have with you camping and you know when you're out in the uh, out in the open, out in the outside with the uh, and and cell phones is another thing which is kind of interesting. People kind of want to ignore that, but. But that's the phone. That's the radio that everybody already has, and you know, just understanding the limitations of it, the things that it can't do, the situations where it won't work, and uh, but also, you know, using it, make it, you know, hike to the top of a hill and use it, th things like that that, are, that come about with, uh, with where it might be uh, very useful for you. Um, a visit to a radio station, and for amateur radio, it's usually a visit to either somebody's ham shack or take a radio, set it up uh, out in the field or, or whatever. Um, and then license requirements, we cover the, the, the three radio, three levels of licensing requirements for the United States. Um, something that's a little new, so they, in the past, the radio merit badge has been split into three kind of choices. And you could either do amateur radio, or you could do shortwave listening, or you could do broadcast radio. And for shortwave uh, listening, it, there's a series that you have to listen for so many hours, days, and log what you've heard, and you know the, the kind of things that you would do when you log the date and the time, what the program is about, that kind of thing. Uh, for broadcast radio, it's more about uh, putting together a simulated uh, broadcast schedule for a radio station, for an imaginary radio station where you put your commercial time in and your with, with music and talk segments and news and different kinds of things like that. So that's another way you can do it. It doesn't have to be uh, amateur radio based. Um, this fourth one is they just added for this year and that's amateur radio direction finding. So that's an official uh, fourth option now to, to uh, 
be able to, to do the merit badge. Now they've uh, they changed this in January. I'm not sure the new merit badge books are even out yet. Uh, there's some good material that's out that covers all of these things, but uh, you know, if you go to the scout store, I'm not sure you'll find them. But last time I checked, the last ones that were the ones that were in the current ones. Um, so you, you talk about cue signs, and then this last one's kind of interesting. You do a 10 minute real or simulated cue show. Now, I always like to try to get somebody actually to hold the microphone and make, you know, make a contact, actually talk to somebody. But for the rules, it can be a simulated QSO as well. And sometimes if you got a group where you're trying to teach 20 kids, you know, it's a lot simpler to get them to talk to each other, you know, give them the guidelines and things that you need to do and, and you know, identifying every 10 minutes and whatever and just and talk them through how to do it. It's even better if you kind of talk them through that exercise and get them to do it, not really telling them that meets the requirement, but then take them out to use the radio. They got a lot better idea using the radio at that point but you've already met the requirement because the trouble you get into when you have 20 kids standing by and you got one radio is it takes a long, long time <laughs> to work through and find somebody and, and do that one by one by one so it's a, it be pretty time consuming so what you got to have for to get the merit badge well first you got to have a counselor and that's basically just an adult who's registered as an adult it used to be you would register as a merit badge counselor um, which was kind of one one path of paperwork that you would do. Now they actually you have to re register as an adult, which includes a background check and then youth protection training, which you have to refresh every two years. So it, it's not a big deal. Um, you know, I think it's it's all really about just protecting protecting the kids. And I had to do redo my youth protection training. I did it about two weeks ago, actually. And it takes about thirty minutes. It's all online, but it's mostly about having two leader deep, having two adults anytime you're dealing with a child, one child like that especially, making sure you've got two leaders there. Now the old rules said that they could also for, it was always when scout events you had to be two leader deep, but when it was a merit badge situation you could have a, the scout could have a buddy with him. But, but in the last training I just took, they're, they're actually encouraging not really this buddy system with the uh, merit badge counselors, but actually having another adult, doesn't have to be another leader or whatever, it's just a another adult and all, all I'd say is you know I'm all about protecting the kids in that situation but I'm also all about protecting myself in that situation because you know you put yourself in a situation where you could be accused of something it's, it's not it's not where you want to be so it's a it's a good thing all the way around um, this is something I just I just found out this year apparently you're supposed to renew your registration as a counselor every year and I don't know how strict they've been about that or if they I noticed that what's funny is you don't you don't get calls every week to teach the radio merit badge. Uh, so I didn't know maybe uh, maybe I dropped off the list or something but but I've read it that that's technically what you're supposed to do. So I've I've done that again for this year. So it was revised back in January and there is an updated PowerPoint presentation and a workbook that go with it that's available now and that's all been prepared for the uh, National Jamboree. So the radio and operator insignia, this is what it looks like. Kind of goes on on your sleeve on the uniform and it's for kids or adults just to kind of recognize that you're, you've got a license and you can operate a radio for, for fun or an emergency or, or whatever that you're, you're qualified to do that. Uh, there's also this Morse code interpreter strip which goes above your pocket here. And that's all based on five words a minute. You know, so many, you know, you gotta carry on a conversation or uh, you know, copy a message and then send a, send a message to five words a minute. Not, not too stringent, but uh, that allows you to wear that above here on your uniform. That's the same spot that you'd wear if you were, if you also spoke Spanish or if you were a sign language interpreter, something like that. It counts as another, as another language to communicate with other folks. So another part of uh, radio scouting is this K2BSA. Have anybody ever heard of K2BSA? Have you talked to those guys on the air before? And, stuff it's the radio club it's you know u.s uh, radio club for scouting basically and i'd encourage you to go check out that website uh, k2bsa.net um lots of good information there um they got a great deal for membership is 12 dollars for a lifetime <laughs> uh not i don't think they're doing a membership drive or anything at the moment but uh but it is kind of interesting if you if you join then you just kind of get the information you get on their list of sending your information about what's going on in the scouting world and you get access to 
you know, documents as they've been planning and been, uh, uh, you know, scheduling and planning things. They also are a big presence at the National Jamborees when they occur. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and it's just, they're the folks that basically put together these teaching materials. You don't have to do anything. They, you know, it, it's here's a presentation you can use and here's the workbook that the scouts need to work and fill fill out information and they all, it all <coughs> falls together. It's just really, really nice. They make it nice and easy. So uh, here's what that website looks like for K2BSA. And all of this is open. You don't have to be a member to see on you all this, except for some things down under that membership tab. Um, because there's some things we talked about. There's a radio scouting tab and the Jonas the Jamboree on the air. The, the Jamboree is talking about the National Jamboree. Um, ICOM has a special place there because ICOM does a lot of stuff. ICOM donates a lot of gear and provides a lot of assistance and stuff for, uh, for the Boy Scouts. Um, this, I think, is a picture of uh, uh, the group that they have at the, had at the Jamboree <coughs> last year, maybe just in, it's, those are the adults that were up there for, uh, for you know, just running the National Jamboree. So there's four kind of like what they call high adventure locations for scouting. And most folks have heard about Philmont Scout Ranch at some point in time. Um, it's out in New Mexico. And uh, my, both my boys got the chance to go out there and do that. The Northern Tier is in Minnesota. That's around the Boundary Waters Canoe area. Um, that's you know very cool place. We don't. I don't think we have any scouts that I know of that have been up there. Our Troop 719 just got back from Sea Base in Florida uh, this past week. They spent what a week, a week or ten days or something. They were touring around doing some other things in Florida too. But they had a couple of uh, big. And probably 35, 40 foot sailboats down in the Keys, uh, fishing and snorkeling and hanging out and doing that. So they got a good taste of that. This last one is is the, a newer one. It, it's only been around for a few years. It's, it's called Summit Bechtel Reserve, and it's in West Virginia. And it's up near Beckley, so it's only about you know, three hours ish from here, something like that. And uh, it's kind of a cool place because. National Jamboree is going to be there July 19th through the 28th. So next week, or you know, nine days from now, National Jamboree is going on up there. So they used to hold the National Jamboree up at Fort AP Hill in Virginia, and they did it through 2010. And that was the 100 year anniversary of the Jamboree was in 2010. Um, so you're talking, you know, 40,000 scouts, leaders, volunteers. Um, K2BSA recruited 40 plus radio amateurs to be on staff up there. Uh, Jonathan and I both uh, applied for that kind of late because of some computer snafus with our local council here. We then didn't, didn't get picked for the, the, the field up quick. We didn't get chosen for the staff. But basically, they're going to be up there playing radio and operating things for a while. They're going to be teaching a new radio merit badge class every hour for the duration of this thing. Now, I'm not imagining it's overnight and stuff. But every hour, they're planning to start a new class. It takes about four hours or so to teach the, the radio merit badge. Um, so there's going to be a bunch of kids uh, going through the thing, and they've got, I think they've got six, uh, six stations set up. Uh, they got, you know, towers and beams, and they're, they're, they're going for it up there having fun. Um, so their goals, the K2BSA's goals for this whole jamboree are to expose 10% of that 40,000 people, just to expose people to amateur radio, so kids and, and adults alike. Um, again, starting the new merit badge class every hour. Uh, so they're hoping to have 300 to 400 merit badges earned by the end of the thing, which is pretty impressive. And then have 100 teams to complete their ARDF course. So good exposure and some fun. They've got a scheduled contact with the International Space Station. Um, they're going to be launching one, maybe two balloons to uh, you know, circumnavigate the world or whatever. The guy that's uh, kind of running all that, he's, he's done it several times before, so see how that goes. Um, satellite contacts, and then uh, actually ICOM installed three repeaters on the premises up there at Bechtel that are there all the time now. So for all of the scouting events that take place up there, whatever they got repeaters, they'll be holding nets every night and doing things like that. And Echo Link will be available uh, to connect and contact folks there too. So the only thing better than the National Jamboree would be a World Jamboree, right? <laughs> well, guess what? The World Jamboree is going to be there at Summit in uh, 2019, so two years from now. And that's the, the last 
The last one in the U.S. was 50 years ago, 1967. So there was one two years ago in Japan. Uh, I had a nephew that actually made it there, and he actually spent a little time in Japan before. He, he's got his little Japanese you know, language interpreter strip there. Um, it, and it's all run by this World Organization uh, of Scouting Movement, W-O-S-M. And that's the folks that are really pushing the, the term radio scouting. They, uh, they're the ones that operate the jamboree on the air, and what's also called the jamboree on the internet, which is that same weekend. Um, so they had over 30,000 scouts in Japan in uh, 2015. So just a little bit about scouts itself, just to kind of give you a little reference. You know, it's the national organization, and then it's split into regions that are kind of north, south, east, west, across the U.S. And then areas which cross state lines. So we're, we're actually in southern region seven here where we are. And it, some of uh, it, some of North Carolina is not in that region, and some of it is, but it goes all the way up north in Virginia, almost to uh, Maryland, actually, or right up to the, to the border. It's kind of a weird shaped uh, area. But it covers a, a, a pretty good pretty good area. And uh, after areas, you get into councils. And you guys have surely seen out on the Silas uh, Creek Parkway where the, the old Hickory Council uh, headquarters office is. And, and just to kind of give you what that is, the, after, after councils, you have districts. And so Wachovia District is basically the Forsyth County um, District. So the old Hickory Council is one of 11 in North Carolina, and it covers all of these counties. So that's basically all of Northwest uh, North Carolina. Uh, for district, the Wachovia district being Forsyth County, any of you guys that were around here with scouting way back when, or not really too long ago, just been a few years ago, they, they named this the Wachovia district. It used to be the Piedmont district and the Salem district. They kind of was divided by I-40, so if you're from northern half of the county and southern half of the county, you're in two different districts. Um, and basically, there's Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, Venture Crews, uh, Sea Scouts, Explorer Posts, uh, all of that stuff falls under the Boy Scouts there. There's an awesome camp. If, uh, anybody ever been to Camp Raven? Uh, yeah, very cool place. Um, it's in Low Gap, which is up near Mount Airy, on the west side of I-77 up there. Um, just, a, just an awesome place. Um, a few months ago, there was a conclave there, which was basically all of Southern Region 7, which keep in mind most of North Carolina, a good portion of Virginia. Uh, the Order of the Arrow is a scouting honor society, so they have 1,500 kids up there for a special event for the Order of the Arrow uh, conclave. Um, Jonathan and I were able to actually go. The ARL sent a representative up there. We went up and set up stations, and it was, it was kind of funny because it was the day that we had a big uh, geomagnetic storm here, and it shut down being able to really do any radio up there until 1.15 or so in the afternoon. We started to kind of be able to pick up signals and stuff. Uh, but we talked to a lot of people. We talked to, and it was kind of interesting. At any given time, we'd have three to eight people standing around, all three of us up there, just asking questions and just talking about radio. So it was, it was a great opportunity to just sit and talk and without even you know, trying to sit and get back to people and talk on the radio. Um, I was amazed at how many kids that I talked to and adults too that didn't even realize there's a, there a radio merit badge. So, you know, there's what, 137 or I can't remember, there's a bunch of merit badges possible. Uh, but there's a good good portion to just get the word out that there, there is a radio merit badge. Is, uh, you know, something that's kind of missing, I think, sometimes. So this World Organization of Scouting Movement, that was started in 1922. So they, they started trying to get scouting, you know, back when it was formed in 1910 in the U.S., around the world organized enough to have, you know, jamborees and have, have get-togethers. So that, that organization's been going around for a long time. So they, they plan and they manage the world jamborees. They basically own and operate this Joda and T event. Um, to just stop a second, the, the Joda, the jamboree on the internet, it's actually been going on since like 1995. So people early on were, it's another way for scouts to connect to each other around the world. And so, <clears throat> you know, back, back then you were using a, an internet relay chat client. Everybody's familiar with that stuff from internet talk from back then, an IRC client. Um, anymore, there's, there's that method. You can do it with a, with a you know, laptop or whatever. 
But you can also do it with a cell phone. They've got an app, of course, an app for everything. There's an app to allow scouts to connect to each other. Um, and so that, that has some certain, uh, you know, certain different kind of things in our current culture, I think, that's been, been popular to, for kids to want to see that. We've not been promoting or, or you know, doing that. We're trying to get people to talk on the radio, and we've been doing it. But uh, there, there's a lot of people doing the internet thing uh, worldwide. Um, so here's another interesting thing is the, both the, the, the Jota and Jody event and also the World, the, the world Jamboree, uh, primarily Boy Scouts, but the Girl Scouts are invited to these events as well. So I'm not sure what the attendance is for them. So if you talk about just the Jamboree on the air, uh, this is just some numbers comparing 2016 to 2015. So this is just U.S. Uh, 10,000 plus scouts. Uh, you know, 6,000 plus total visitors. They were, you know, parents or folks that came by or whatever. Um, you know, 267 total stations reported. And it, those numbers look really impressive with the 51% and 30% increases. But what had kind of happened the year before is a lot of stations had registered to do this, but then had never filed a report afterwards. So they, they don't really know. Who, who participated and who did what? Because you kind of follow a report of how many countries you talked to and how many contacts you made, how many visitors came by, and that kind of thing. Kind of like a field day sort of thing. Um, but just to note, this is the 60th year, and it's uh, October 20th and then 20, through the 22nd. Uh, so we'll be planning to do that again uh, out in Louisville anyway. And that's the the patch that's for the uh, the jamboree on the air and the jamboree on the air. That's sort of the international patch that uh, will be happening. Available. So I don't know, uh, this is really pretty unreadable even from here, uh, but it's just the first, first thing about this chart is it's logarithmic. So you know there's 0, 0.1, 1, 10, and 100 over here, and it's to represent the percentage of scouts in a given country that participated in this jamboree on the internet or jamboree on the air. So you see on the top, there's Brazil. And of course, I guess if you only had, you know, two scouts and one of them participated, then you'd be all right at the 50% mark, right? Uh, so so, it's, so it's, a little, it's a little goofy, but, but just trying to kind of put it on the scale for small countries and big countries for the, the number of people that are participating. What you can see is, you know, there's pretty good uh, percentage numbers out here for Brazil and Canada and, you know, Netherlands and uh, looks like Serbia, Venezuela. But look at the United States here. It's kind of interesting, you know. There's more scouts here in the United States, so as a percentage, maybe not as many people. But I mean, this is this is 0.1 percent, and we're way way over here. So, um, so the, internationally, this is a pretty big big deal. Um, people people participate a little better than they do here in the states, I think. So this is another chart, uh, another one, probably a little hard to see and understand, but the this is just like the number of countries that have reported, and these are the number of reports. I think I got that right. Yeah, that's countries, and that's the number of reports going across. And then they were some of these years they were combining Echo Link plus radio, and then the internet was the the piece of so radio plus the Echo Link was here. You know, this was the internet portion. They quit doing that, and now you can't really tell who, who's using what. Uh, but what, what's kind of impressive here is the scale over here, that's 1.3 million, 1.3 million uh, scouts that took care of, took part worldwide. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty interesting, you know, so you talk about the logarithmic and the percentages on the other screen, but you look at just pure numbers. We had 10,000 in the U.S. that were reported, right? So uh, lots, lots of room to, to, you know, grow. Now this was not the Joda Station from Louisville last year uh, and it's kind of funny if you google around or get on uh, get on YouTube you'll see some interesting contraptions there's some great videos of people done with drones and things put it to music lots of in languages you can't understand um, coming from other parts of the world and you'll see people and kids and people climbing up on these things up on you know 50 feet in the air with kids up there Barefooted, and well, I don't know. It's, it's kind of interesting to see. That's, it, that's not here in the states. No, it's not in the states. I didn't think we, we we would allow things like that to happen. Yeah, but I'm just thinking. You know, when you you, you can't really you know you can't really afford to put up that tower that you want or whatever. You might be able to get some Boy Scouts to build you. <laughs> 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 
Here's your job today. <laughs> <laughs> so just kind of I mean, strengths of this whole, uh, <laughs> the whole radio scouting <laughs> thing. Uh, the KTBSA, they work real hard to support the Jamboree, and the Jamboree on the air, and the National Jamboree. And very good, easy to use, merit badge teaching materials. They do a lot of PR for scouting. There was uh, they do there's several ham radio now episodes out there that uh, involve uh, radio scouting. Uh, QSD articles. Anybody see that article? There's an article a month ago, I guess, from Jim Wilson, the guy that's the head of the KTBSA. Um, there was an article that came out in ARL this past week talking about the jamboree up in uh, up in West Virginia that's coming up. So some councils and troops are active. When you look at this, there are folks in Charlotte, Nashville, and places that are going forward. Around here, it hadn't been as as active for sure. There's a room for improvement. Um, so that's why some of our weaknesses is you know not not so much, right? Other councils and troops is not so much. Um, for opportunities, there's opportunities to help by teaching the radio merit badge. Um, but just kind of segue a little bit from that. The, uh, I got I, I asked to teach a, the radio merit badge for a radio merit, a merit badge college back a couple of months ago, which I agreed to do back in February. Or so. And so was preparing and getting ready and getting up to you know ready for the thing. And so Mary Batch College is where like the district here for the Wacovia district, all of Forsyth County, they hold out of Forsyth Tech, they offered seventeen merit badges, I think, to teach for a day for a Saturday. And kids from all troops and everybody come out and they just teach these specific merit badges. So uh, I, I did that and about a week before that I got a call from the guy organizing it and he said uh, we haven't had anybody sign up for the radio mayor badge. So there were 250 kids that took place, that took part in that mayor badge college, but not a single one of them signed up for the radio mayor badge. So kind of interesting. I don't know why if uh, it's got a stigma associated with it, or maybe people just there, the stuff are just more interesting. I ended up, they asked me if I could uh, teach the electricity mayor badge instead, which I did. And uh, glad I did. It was a lot of fun, but I had like 26 kids to sit and do that. So now there's another merit badge that I can that I can teach and offer. Um, there's electronics merit badge, robotics. There, there's other kinds of things that are sort of related to what we do here. Um, so just mentoring youth to get their license. Uh, if you find a kid and get them to study. The, you know the problem is I found is you start talking to a kid. And you say, would well, you be interested in doing this? I say, yeah, and, and they get a look at that book. It's about that thick, and it's like, I say, yeah, and, he, and you just study this, and you go take a test. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take a test. <laughs> so, so don't you want to get, take a test and get your driver's license one day? Or, but it's a, but there's definitely a kind of a, you know, people stand back and don't, and just don't want to do it, don't want to, don't want to deal with it. That's it's been kind of a challenge. So Jamboree on the air that's uh, coming up in the fall, you know, participate, jump on the air those days and talk to people if you can. Uh, we ran into mostly Cub Scouts last year, Jonathan and I sat out and we didn't, and this was funny, we didn't have any Scouts to show up. His, his, one of his sons came out on Sunday and, uh, and talked a little bit to some folks. But we didn't have any Scouts really wanted to be there, but it was okay. It was a beautiful weekend. It's the same weekend as the Worked all Germany contest. I think the New York Kiso party. The uh, uh, there were, I can't remember now. Man, there were it seemed like there were three Kiso parties and the Germany contest going on, and we were tuning around looking for scouts and for scouts and for scouts. And we we found a, a group of them at a scout camp somewhere, and there were 500 of them down in Charleston. We talked to some up in Maine. We talked to some out in Missouri. Um, but we talked to a bunch of people in Germany and in New York and everywhere too, which was kind of Kind of good, just the you know for the entertainment factor for us. Um, but we'll we'll do it again. Hopefully, have some uh, some better participation from the kids. Um, so just making contacts during these events. This national jamboree that's coming up. Keep in mind, they got three or four hundred kids are trying to get merit badges, and in starting nine days from now. So if you hear them getting the kid on the air, try to get them to talk and get their merit badge. Just try to get them to hang on for ten minutes for that cue. So the kid wants to kind of say hey. And, Mic down. Start start asking them what color their bike was when they were a kid. You know, I mean, just you know, what, what kind of tennis shoes they got, what sports they play. You know, just try to try to talk to them and interact with them. That's the, the best thing to do. 
So uh, the World Jamboree in a couple of years, that might be interesting too. They'll run a station. They ran one in Japan uh, two years ago. Um, and this is one that is not really part of the radio scouting thing, but this is one I've come across. I heard them on the radio probably two years ago. The Scouting 500. Has anybody, anybody heard those guys on the air before? It's the Kansas Motor Speedway. <coughs> Holds a big event where they have they have 10,000 kids that come out and camp, Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts that come out and camp at the Speedway. So it's just a big scouting event. They set up a station, K2PSA, going uh, to be operating there, I'm sure, just go around. Um, so I don't know, that's in September, so watch for that. And then just locally here with the Old Hickory Council, um, you know, like I said, there's not, not been much going on. There's not really a, a pull from them to, you know, get radio folks over to help them out. And so we've been trying to gently talk to people and, and, and folks are, are pretty receptive to it. But at the same time, uh, Camp Raven Knob has been, the last several years, has been booked for uh, Cub Scout, all parent son camperies uh, the weekend of Joda. Which is, you know, which is kind of, it's just cool. You can do that too, but it might be cool to you know, have Boy Scouts there and work on some merit badges and do some stuff like that too. So we'll see. Um, scout camps on the air is another opportunity. This is something that, that I think actually this uh, World Organization of Scouting Movement is, is uh, talking about, and that's it's kind of like an activation, like activation National Park on the air kind of thing. It's, Go to the scout camp, or while while you're there anyway, take your radio and set up and just and there's a there's a place on that KTBSA site where you can trade, you know where you're going to be and what frequencies. And by the way, for the jamboree, all that information is there too. If you look at the, they're going to put the frequencies up that they're going to be on when they're doing different times of the, of the week. Um, so it's a worldwide uh, effort for the scout camps on the air. So it's Girl Scouts and adventuring and guiding and other types of things. Um, there's a Cub Scout radio opportunity. The Cub Scouts have, are now offering as part of this the Arrow of Light, which is the highest award of Cub Scouts. This building a better world requirement, and it mentions Jamboree on the air, but basically just to make a contact with another scout in another country, one way or the other. Well, the radio is a great way to do it. Um, Girl Scouts too. This is kind of funny. They they have a thing called World Thinking Day that goes on every year. And I actually saw some websites talking about Thinking Day on the air, T Dota, I guess. Uh, so I don't, I don't know much about that. I haven't heard folks on the radio doing that. But on that day, it's probably, you know, you probably tune around and you probably find somebody maybe in another country. I know the folks that I was seeing were in England, I think, that were doing this. Um, so just another kind of option. So just kind of threats to the thing. It, it seems to me like this jamboree on the internet might be eclipsing the jamboree on the air. You know, and you kind of think about it, it's the whole internet thing is way more accessible to you know, the kids than, than radio, uh, having phone apps and computers, and, and you don't have any third party rules to have to worry about when you're uh, talking to folks. So, uh, the, the next thing and I think is a, a big problem, just, you know, everybody's so busy, the kids' extracurricular activities, you know, you got a kid that's doing all that, right? He's in the band, he's playing soccer, he's playing baseball. <laughs> Playing, playing piano, he's on the shooting team, whatever, you know. So people get really busy trying to dedicate some time to trying to study and get, get a license. It takes a little, you got to stop for a minute and focus on that to, to really be able to do it. And, and then finally, just, you know, just like in scouting, you, you got to have a parent that's committed to helping you helping get there, you know, helping the kid get, to get his license. So that's just, you know, you got to have transportation to get places, uh, get on time, get access to a computer or a phone or whatever to be able to study. Um, so just a uh, quick review, the, the merit badge we talked about and the radio operator insignia, the Morse code interpreter strip, and the KTVSA radio club. And, and go check out that, uh, that site. There's uh, going be some good information on there in the next few weeks as, as they're launching the balloon to track and as they're uh, operating during the uh, Jamboree, uh, the, the National Jamboree. Um, keep in mind the World Jamboree coming up here. Um, there's opportunities for Cub Scouts and Girl Scouts too. The Scout Camps on the Air is another kind of thing that, uh, like I said, is sort of sort of like the activating uh, National Parks sort of concept. Uh, and then the Jamboree on the Air that's going to be the 60th uh, in October. So that's uh, that's about it, guys. Um, any any questions or thoughts or 
Where, where do you put your Jota station? Where do you we, put your? We, we've your done ours. It's been at Sheridan United Methodist Church um, in Louisville. <clears throat> That's just where our scout troop meets, and um, they let us put the string and antenna up in the trees out there, and uh, we have radio for the for the for the you know, troop. We I like sitting outside and doing stuff. If it's a nice weekend in October, good gracious man. I'm gonna be outdoors, hanging out, probably get the sunburn. We had a, we had a canopy up last year, uh, but I just operated off a of battery. And it's a lot of fun. Okay, well, thanks everybody. Before you sit down, I guess all of you saw Jess. This needs a keyboard. I had a couple of those things, but. Uh, you were running this whole presentation on a computer. Could you show them the computer? Oh, yeah, it's this little thing right here. The Raspberry Pi. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you really need. Well, we think we need more than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. You, you just know, need a big screen. <laughs> the more you know, the less you need. There you go. Very good. Okay, I have the uh, sign up sheet for uh, Tour de Tanglewood. I guess it's either come back here. Anybody else wants it? Uh, Harlan has it in his hands. Um, I know I talked to Mason earlier. How many people in here, let's say a show of hands, that worked for 13 colonies last weekend? Oh, that's good. Everybody successful, I hope. Very good. Be sure and uh, send off your sheets and give a donation if you can work that out. Well, did anybody get Great Britain? Yes. <laughs> yeah, but they did. Let me, let me okay. tell you, it was tough. I didn't find okay. How did you do it, Ron? Tell us. Basically, your I, station? my station, I just kept listening on and off, on and off. 99% of the time, he was unintelligible. Yeah. He was so busy, I couldn't break in. And then on the 6th, about 8 o'clock, I went back on. I found him. I'm set on uh, 14 meters. And he was actually legible. And I gave one call. He heard it. He took me. He went through the process. I left him up, and five minutes later, he was dead again. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. <laughs> Mason had a unique way to do that. Tell us how you did it, Mason. Okay, well technically speaking, I didn't work him with my call. It's there's a club call that we just got for a station in Texas, a remote club call. I worked it using the club call sign. I have everybody else besides them using my call sign. I so technically it. speaking, with my call sign did not work great for me. Did you work it out? How about did you get it? Yeah. Uh PSK thirty one on the last day. Oh <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Well, I, it was a lot of fun. I, I had to, I had a little, I worked 40 and 80. I lacked five stations on 20. I mean, Maryland was a nightmare on 80 meters. <laughs> but uh, finally came in. I had 40 and 80. So I had a lot of fun with that too. We still, let's see where we are on our food. We still got a couple of pieces over here, so don't hurt yourself. This one will be the last piece. <laughs> Please stand for the kids. That helps, doesn't it? Um, Business meeting next Wednesday, uh, next Wednesday, next Monday night, 7.30. Actually, we're going to be meeting at 6.30 if you want to eat. And we're meeting at Meet Pueblo. We're <laughs> at Ham's. They close the doors. Last month, we met at Sheridan. Great food. All the noise you could stand. And just a <laughs> terrible place to have a meeting. Meet Pueblo has a meeting room of all 80 people. So we'll meet there. We'll try that. The month after, we we'll maybe try something else. You know, if you want to stay there, we can do that too. That's the one on Stratford, right? Yeah, it's the one on Stratford. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the one in Clemens. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so there's the Big Pueblo on Stratford Road. Uh, there's a Christian bookstore next door, and a battery place. So it uh, should be pretty easy to find. Sound of a call screen for office. Corrupt, corrupt, yeah. yeah. Okay, any questions? Do I hear anything? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> so, second. And we have a second. Thanks very much, guys. Enjoy. <laughs>